Hollywood stars and a police officer who allegedly stepped over the line. Punky Brewster and Family Matters star Cherry Johnson and her boyfriend, fellow actor Dennis White, say they were on a romantic getaway after teaching an acting workshop in North Carolina. They decided to drive down to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, when a sightseeing stop led to some very unwelcome attention from the police. It's at that point where Cherry and Dennis's adventure suddenly took a disturbing turn. They say an officer harassed them, handcuffed them for no reason, searched their belongings, and eventually let them go without so much as an apology. Now, a writer posted their story to a CNN I report, and it's touched off a tidal wave of reactions and an internal and police investigation into what the couple believes is a serious case of racial profiling. Cherry sure, Johnson. Terry Johnson and Dennis White are with us right now from Hollywood. It's great to have you both here. I'm so sorry it is under these circumstances, guys, because this is it's just a terrible story. And Dennis, I want to start with you. You were pulled over. You guys were on the side of the road. You were just taking some pictures, checking out a cotton field, and that's when you encountered the police officer. What happened? Well, you know, Terry, she's never seen cotton before, so uh, we saw the field. We pulled over, took some pictures, and... Um, just taking in the whole aspect of it, walking back to the car, and the officer pulled up. Um, Cherry was like, I just wanted to take some pictures. Uh, the cop pulled his gun, you know, reached for his gun, told us to get in the car. So we got in the car. He asked my license registration, uh, which is customary. He went back, checked everything, came back clean. Um, he asked us a billion questions, where we were going, where we were staying, how long we have known each other. Uh, then he pulled me out the car, um, asked me more questions about drugs, all different types of things and then he went and questioned her and you know came back said she had a warrant for arrest <laughs> which was absolutely not true he came back and verified it wasn't true um, he asked could he search the car and I said no um, he then went put his gloves on and handcuffed me and very aggressively so you know I asked was I being arrested he said no I said I'm not an arrest but you handcuffed me he said because I can um, and then he went and pulled her out of the car and handcuffed her. Uh, it was hot, bugs flying all around, it was crazy. And um, he just really was asking her a lot of questions about drugs and, and just said there might be a dead body, that's why he wants to check the car. Uh, another officer showed up um, and you know talked to us. Um, he asked again, could he check the car? We said no. Um, Cherry asked for a watch commander he said, oh, you want to play that game? You want to play hardball? Well, you know, I can just take you downtown for uh, trespassing and, and petty larceny. So at that point, you know, I didn't want to see, it, it didn't need to go any further. So I said, okay, sure, check the car. I have nothing to hide. So he went, checked through our stuff. He found money in our bag, said it was too much money. Why do we have so much money on us? Um, and he checked my bag and he said, look, this is marijuana. Um, looked in and it was a tea bag. I said, no, that's a tea bag. So he said, well, I could check it. I said, well, please do what you will. And he smelled it and said, no, it's tea. So he just went through all our stuff and, you know, he didn't find anything because there was nothing to find. Cherry, Cherry, Cherry and Dennis, yeah. I, you I mean, you're laying this story out piece by piece. I have to ask, when all of this was happening, was there a point where you said, okay, we're being profiled here when you knew this, this wasn't how a, a regular traffic stop goes? I actually asked him when I was still seated in the car after he told me that I did not have a warrant for my arrest and he started asking me about drugs for the third time. I said, are you doing this because we're black? And that was when everything took a turn for the worst. He patted the car, he walked back to his car, he put on gloves. And the next thing I knew he was handcuffing Dennis. Wow. Uh, Cherry, we mentioned that this other cop came along. Dennis said that uh, he, he pulled out of his car and he recognized you. What do you think would have happened if he hadn't recognized you? You think things would have gotten south from there? I think it would have gotten worse because he, he was in the trunk now. He had mm -hmm. already gone through my purse. He had gone through my toiletry bag. He had gone mm -hmm. through my computer bag and he was in Dennis's bag and he just kept asking, well, if you have marijuana, I'll just write you a citation and I'll let you go. And then he said, well, if you have cocaine, just let me know where it is and we can get this on our way. And the other cops said, Ma'am, do you know who you're talking to? And I said, sir, have you ever heard of the Just Say No to Drugs campaign? The last time I was in South Carolina, I was about nine years old, and I was doing a Just Say No to Drugs rally. I'm part of the reason why Just Say No ever went to the White House. And he paused. 
And then I don't remember what the other cop said, but shortly after that is when he uh, unhandcuffed us and let us go. Yeah. Chair, you know, I, I see how emotional you are uh, about this because this is a very real life situation, but you were also on the sitcom Family Matters in the 90s. And you know, we actually went back, we found an episode from that show where it actually addresses what we're talking about now, and that's racial profiling. The dad, Officer Winslow, confronts a racist cop who had pulled over his teenage son, Eddie. And I want to watch this scene together and then ask you a couple of Bottom questions. line, your kid was in the wrong part of town. The wrong part of town? Yeah. Oh, so what are you saying? That black kids aren't allowed in white neighborhoods. Come on. They wouldn't be there unless they were looking for trouble. And you better talk to your kid. He gave me a lot of lip. Oh? Yeah. Is that why you made him get out of his car? Is that why you forced him to lie down? Is that why you cuffed him? Chair, you know, uh, this episode aired almost 20 years ago. So what does it say to you that after all this time that we're still talking about this? That it hasn't gotten any better, and it's, it's real. Sad. Um, Family Matters was a show where we always touched on real issues. Um, it hurts me more that telling the story, other people are not surprised. They're not shocked about what we went through, and uh, so many people have gone through it, too. I don't understand how come they haven't fought it and how come they just mm. let it go. It's like we've been conditioned to think that it's okay, that we have to just sweep it under the rug, but we're not doing that no more. We're fighting. It's not okay. No, it is definitely not okay. This is uh, one of those mo most incorrigible things that unfortunately still goes on today. I do want to read the statement that Show Business obtained from the Marion County Sheriff Department. They said discrimination in any form, including racial profiling, is strictly prohibited by this department. And as Sheriff of Marion County, South Carolina, I can assure you I will take immediate and appropriate action to investigate the allegations of racial profiling made by Mr. White and Ms. Johnson. This matter will be dealt with by an internal investigation within the department, and I will also ask the state law enforcement division to review the allegation made against Deputy Barfield. Uh, that is the deputy in question uh, here. D Dennis, at the end of the day, what kind of a resolution do you hope for or expect in this situation? Just the knowledge that, um, that it happens and that you know we all come together. We can't fight it by ourselves, so if everyone comes together and, and stops the, the racial profiling, um, and put a, a concerted effort to, to eradicate it. Um, and also, I mean, honestly, personally, I would like for him alleviated from his job. I would like him fired so that other officers know that there is repercussions from doing those ty type of things. And we want a formal apology from him and uh, the mayor. I Just hate for a man to lose his job, but he does not need a badge and a gun. Mm -hmm. um, maybe a desk job or something like that. Well, we really but hope people are paying attention and, and seeing how emotional you are about this, Cherry. I can't even uh, begin to imagine what you went through. Thank you for sharing your story with us, guys, and we'll continue to follow. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.